about 10 durations you're done. <laughs> Technically it's five, here we go. All right, so take one, break into two halves, and pass into two directions. No, 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 not this, break this into two halves. This is pile. So uh, take one, take, uh, break into two piles, and pass the two piles away. Mm -hmm. So one pass, it, pass one to Brian, pass the other one behind you. So I take, take so one, break into two halves, break the pile into two halves, and pass it to two people. Oh. Pass it to <laughs> Alright, well, yeah, let's do it that way because you're filming, aren't you? <laughs> As everyone's getting their sheets of paper, feel free to color it in, feel free to draw on that, cut it out. I'll be giving you guys um, a strip later for your own take home projects, which is going to be fun. Allow full screen with keyboard controls. Just cancel. Okay. I've never seen that message ever. Nope, that's okay. apparent. I'm going to do that. Allow it. They are your enemy. You are expected to defeat them, destroy them, conquer them in any way possible, just eliminate them from the world. However, that's not true with Chinese dragons. Now, come to compare them. Uh, they're both fictitious beasts. They're not real. I know, I love them. They're real. I'll totally own a pet dragon. I can't, so I'm sad about that. Uh, the Western dragon is quite lizard like, it often has wings. Fly. It has magical abilities somewhat. It has a, able to protect itself from arrows, uh, magical shots, mages, um, and it can fire. The Chinese dragon also has a magic power. It is serpentine. It looks really like a snake, especially the long winding part with legs and arms on it. Um, it does not have wings. It can be depicted with wings, but it's not necessary. And oh. Right. Wait, that's clicking into it. I'm sorry, that I mean, read your thing doesn't work. Yeah, it should not be that. So let's try. There we go. Alright, the Chinese dragon. This is what I love about present. <laughs> so, fun fact the number of claws or toes on a dragon that depicts how high up a social hierarchy in the physical world they are, or in the real social hierarchy. Uh, the emperor has five toes or five claws. The nobles have four. Uh, the anyone less, three or less, is commoners. So we will quickly into. Oh, yeah, there you go. This one has four. As you can count, one, two, three, four. How much did the previous one have? Did anyone notice? I can go back. And boom. Resi. <laughs> Um, another thing that often depicted with Chinese dragons is it has a pearl right there. It is a source of magical power for the dragon, it is a source of wealth, it is a source of good luck. It's basically the essence or soul. The dragon loves it. It is like Smeagol with its precious. <laughs> it will defend it to its last dying breath. And if it accidentally loses it, it will fight another dragon for it. It will totally do battle for one for it. So, in culture and reverence, in a very significant way, the dragon, whether it is a silent part or a celebrated part, depending on the day, whether it's a dragon festival or a dragon folk uh, festival, they are celebrated in the culture. Um, it, it could be as little as a quick reference in the, in the day, or as, little as, <coughs> as much as literally devoting a whole day to a dance of the dragon, like this one. Uh, the pearl for this one is not uh, available, it probably is off here off screen. But generally in a dragon dance, they will have a pearl, and dragons chasing the pearl around, and they do a bunch of cool aerobatic tricks with the dragon. 
this is often paired with the line, but that's a separate issue. The role as a guardian for a Chinese dragon. As I said before, uh, dragons are not your enemy in Chinese culture. They are actually your friends, your allies, something you can actually go, go for. You can go um, ask them a question. They might help you. They might not, depending on how good they feel about you. Yeah, for your own personalities. Um, a very good depiction of this actually is from Mulan, I found. Uh, where they had Wushu, the dragon, go find Mulan and be her guardian for her adventure. And um, I found this awesome zombie Mulan. But I, I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. <laughs> Another fun fact, fun fact number two, dragons, their eyes, when you draw them, are generally left blank. It is not a requisite, but it is generally blank due to a legend that they have, that a person who once drew a dragon that looks so lively that almost looked real, but he didn't finish the eyes. So people start asking me, well, come on, it's not finished until you finish the eyes. And he goes, no, 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 if I do that, the dragon will come alive and fly off into heaven. And they were like, no, 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 no. And so it, it kept pressuring him and he finally caved. So pure pressure works, even in ancient times. And he dotted the eyes of the dragon. The moment he did that, the spirit of the dragon came through, it broke off the wall, flew into the heavens, and majestically, and majestically it just disappeared. And people were like, shocked and gasped. And that saying is called dotting the eye of the dragon, at least my translation of that. Uh, in Mandarin it's called Fa Long Yi Um It is actually a way of saying, I have now put on the finishing touches, and it is well off complete. And to not put on the finishing touches, is just say, this is still a work in progress, don't judge it. You may put your uh, put the eyes in. Uh, often, uh, the dragon is uh, related to the idea of an emperor. Uh, remember how I said five claws for an emperor and so on and so forth, the less claws, the lower on social hierarchy. Um, the emperor's body uh, and physical health and everything is often referred to as the dragon body or long ti. Uh, long is the word for dragon, ti is the word for body. And um, they will often, like, uh, when the uh, doctor will come up, uh, will say, Oh, Emperor, you must be careful of your dragonly body. You must keep it healthy for the sake of the people. Although probably he's keeping it healthy for himself. Um, living in luxury, he want to be alive for that. Um, in addition, the Emperor is actually viewed as a father figure in culture. Uh, this is uh, evident in all sects, uh, not sex, all steps in the social hierarchy. The father will be viewed as a father figure of the, of the household. The elder will be viewed as a father figure of the village. The next step up, the, the most highest ranking or highest esteemed person is looked upon as the father figure. And so, because the emperor has been referred to as the dragon body, and he is considered the father figure, naturally that his descendants or the people he is governing is the descendants of dragons. And so, it is a national animal for China. Chinese people will call themselves, on occasion, the descendants of dragons. They are not actually saying you're genetically related to them. That's a separate issue. Given the fact that they don't exist. But, they are often, they refer to themselves uh, as the dragons. Oh, 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 no, 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 that. There we go. So, as a side note, um, the exact uh, dragon is considered the yang of the yin yang symbol. And the phoenix would consider the yin on the yin yang symbol. And so, because the dragon is the emperor, the empress naturally becomes the phoenix. And these are these are often juxtaposed to each other. If you have a boy and a girl twins, they're called the dragon and phoenix twins in Chinese. Feng uh, Huang Pai, I think it is. But, um, um, sorry, Long Feng Pai, I just called them the phoenix. Um, and uh, if you have uh, empresses, they are often referred to as the phoenix. And girls um, in Chinese culture are often and sometimes named uh, of the part of the phoenix in them. So that they embody the beauty, the grace, the rebirth of the phoenix. Side And the elemental association with dragons. It is not absolute. Hello, you can come in. Okay, sure. Um, it is not absolute that the dragons control the water, but it is often associated with them. And in many mythologies, they do control the water. Uh, there are times where they instead control fire, there are times when they control earth. They're, 
they can control all the elements, but they are most associated with water. Um, yeah, in the culture, uh, people would say that the heavenly king or the heavenly father has told the dragon to give rain to the area. And so the dragon will now do the bidding, uh, put rain by spewing rain power from his mouth, and uh, water the crops, making sure that the land is fertile. And if your land is barren or dry, then that must mean you have offended the high emperor of the dragon. He has told the dragon not to give you any water. And so the, the dragons have become this great symbol for uh, next uh, crop growth and um, just rainfall. Uh, unfortunately, occasionally they are also associated with uh, floods when they just overdo it. Um, they don't drink, so I don't think it is alcohol deliberation that they um, just accidentally drown out a bunch of other people. Um, it could also be that the emperor has ordered to be, for them to be drowned in water. Um, but that is the only way that they have associated dragons with water. Oh, yeah, there you go. Uses and language, and this is the fun part. Uh, in the middle, you have the current iteration of the character dragon. The character's uh, pronunciation is long. And you will hear that often, and uh, sometimes, or often, often in, uh, in conversations, they'll say, talk about uh, dragons, or they'll talk about um, how um, uh, something is comparable with a dragon, etc. And you'll see so here quickly. But let's go quickly into entomology. This, if you um, even if you try to use some imagination, it looks very blocky and does not look quite like a dragon. You might see it like a serpentine. Uh, figure here with three and then one more leg, yeah? so four legs in total, but this head looks nothing like a head. And I struggled with that when I was a kid because I remember um, seeing pictures of how Chinese words were made. Like, if you're drawing and everything, I'm like, well, come on, draw a dragon. Why is it this word? And so the etymology is this. They actually start looking like a dragon. On the very top, is the, the, the further up, the older the language is. So you can clearly see the mouth, the body, and the legs. They went down further, you can see the eyes, start, start, start simplifying a bit. And then notice how it looks like a circle with legs, but has a crown or a horn, the, the enders. And they kept simplifying. And you can see it as iterations come by. The left side actually started becoming more like the mouth, and the left side just represent the uh, right side just represent the body, and so it eventually became something like this. Now during this iteration, I found two that I actually really like. Uh, and these are the two. Um, they are called the shell bone writing and the bronze writing. Or um, in Mandarin words, jia wu wen, or jing wen. And the shell bone writing is used for oracle um, and divination. So they will write these words. Uh, I don't know how dragon will come into there exactly, but they will have the word dragon somehow, probably to do with the king. Maybe I will ask the dragon to spill water or send a message to, uh, to the heavenly father. And they'll write down and then they'll burn the oracle bone and then they'll split in some way and they'll, they'll read that split and how it splits. The bronze writing is used for um, cast iron bronzing. So they'll have the bronze and they'll carve or um, engrave the writing into the metal, making it very uh, ornate and beautiful. Um, if you have just have one word, not so much, but generally on the bronze casting, they will have many lines of word and you can literally fit like an essay on there. Due to the fact that Chinese characters, one word means, oh sorry, one character means a word. And so you can really condense a lot of it into a spherical or semi spherical shape. Now, this iteration is um, this the uh, uh, Xuan. It uh, is, I believe, the iteration that when once China, oh, quick, quick side note into history China was once separated into many, many sections. A king named Qing Huang came in. Um, uh, united them, and he found that many people had different ways of writing the same, same, the same word. And he was like, yeah, no, I can't do that. He went ahead and combined and unified all the writings. And I believe this was one, though, this is the one he chose for writing. There were probably a few other iterations, but he dismissed those. And here, if I compare it with the dragon on the right, you can clearly see the horns, the mouth, the crown, and then the body, serpentine body. So the mouth, the horns, the serpentine body, the legs, and the back just died. No, you just have to, because it's not plugged in. Oh, I see. I see what you're doing. Magic. Don't shut down, don't shut down. No, no. And so, there we go. 
<laughs> ultimate blender. So, common ideas and expressions. Uh, these are translated directly from, or uh, as best I can, while keeping the meaning of the Chinese idiom. <coughs> um, I also explain the, the meaning in English, and also the pronunciations in Chinese. Or, sorry, Mandarin. I can't read this in Chinese. I, I, get my, I get annoyed with that. But anyways, uh, the one expression is, with the spirit of a dragon or horse, or long ma jing sen. It just means to be full of energy. Dragons are uh, considered majestic, powerful, great beings. And a horse is also very fast, very energetic, you can run long distances. And so when you describe someone to have, or tell them to have low um, ma it means to be full of energy, be full of vigor, charge forth. But into the eye of, eye of the dragon, hua long jing jing. We explained that quickly before, just putting on the finishing touches. Uh, the Q is like a dragon, and this one's something I really liked when I, was first, when I first heard it. Because uh, at the moment I heard it, I like, I got it. Uh, my father was like, are you sure you got it? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, you're, you're sure you're not talking about dragon? I'm like, I, I know, there's no dragons. And he was like, what? No, there are dragons. <laughs> and that's a small parable. Um, so it just means an extremely long line. So the Mandarin saying is da pai cang long. Da pai means to have a very long line, cang long as if it's a long dragon. Uh, another, oh, the credit covers it, darn. Uh, another uh, way, this is the same. This is called the carp that left the dragon gate. Li yu tiao long men. It means to complete a very difficult task or a very difficult goal. Generally, this means uh, in terms of essay writing or test taking, uh, because in the past, to become a dragon or a noble or someone who worked in the government, you need to go through this very hard academic testing where you write an essay, judges will come and uh, judge your um, essay writing, and you manage to pass and get position. It is as if you are a small fish or carp that jumped the high gates and became a dragon. Uh, that's just a parable. No carp has ever become a dragon. Uh, at least scientifically, no one has found a carp that become a dragon. So you only go out by carp and pray one day to become one for your own very dragoness. So, generally, dragons are used as metaphors for things that are physically long, majestic, difficult to complete or do. Can anyone think of further examples? Go ahead. No? I'm thinking of a structure somewhere um, in China. The Great Wall. The Great Wall. Very good. The Great Wall is one of them. <laughs> It is one of them. Perfect. Great wall. The Kung Fu. Uh, there are many moves in Kung Fu that are named with the dragon in them. Mm -hmm. uh, the throne, the seat the emperor sits on is called the Long Zuo, the dragon seat. Uh, the Great Wall of China, etc., etc. And as a side note, because I am a tad disappointed with this uh, myth, this is an aerial pic of China from NASA's uh, International Space Station. Uh, the circle is where you might kind of see what out of the port window. Can anyone kind of guess where the Great Wall is? Yes? I heard it was a myth that you actually can't see it from space. You cannot, and that is okay. true. You cannot see it from space. Uh, some people might point this out, this line out. That's actually a river. Um, these lines, that's actually a river. The Great Wall actually is this very sliver, very hard to find. But it's positioned here based on geographic, or not geographic, geolocation, but it's mm -hmm. almost impossible to see. And this is with a zoom lens. This is with a zoom lens. This photo is taken with, I think, 120 millimeter zoom lens. This is what you will see it from the International Space Station. Yes. You cannot see it from space. <laughs> uh, to see something from space, it needs to be both long and wide. It needs to be a huge structure. So that was just a myth I want to um, debunk because I keep hearing it. I yep, this one is it. So the last bit, uh, next bit is artifacts and culture. Now this part I uh, put up uh, put, uh, in the Chinese culture. There is the idea that the dragon had nine sons, and these are his nine sons. They're all forms of dragon, or uh, a dragon's put it somewhere. 
Uh, you have the turtle dragon, or dragon turtle. You have the dragon that sits on top of rooftops, dragons that hold the bell. Um, they each have their own meaning. This one is, this fiat is for the court system. It's uh, just a dragon that can see the truth, find the